hit. That was an impressive one. Let's go. God, I can't do that, dude, because, like, I do that little tune all the time, and I'm afraid of doing it on here and getting copyrighted. What? It's the... it's from a song. I don't even want to do it, but it's from a song called uh, Vehicle by the Ides of March, and it just makes such a good theme song, but the, um, with, like, the instrumental, but the lyrics are honestly pretty weird. I'm not going to sing them, because I think that's the part that'll copyright me. I honestly don't know. But I, I'll speak him, and if it gets copyrighted, then fuck it. But he literally says, Hey, well, I'm the friendly stranger in the black sedan. Won't you hop inside my car? I got peaches, got candy. I'm a lovable man. I can take you to the nearest spot. What in the fuck? Yes. Really weird. But if you hear it, it's so weird. It's just, like, masqueraded in this fucking... Is that even a word? Masquerade, maybe? In this just, like, jazzy 70s... It just kind of hides the fact that it's very pretty creepy. like uh, pedophile ish. Yeah. Before we fucking get into that, I gotta do this intro. Welcome to the Weasley update. I'm gonna do it in a radio voice this time. I am Aiden Weas. And I am here with my little brother, Ryder Weas. And uh, he is not sauced, but I just shotgunned a beer and uh, smoked a bowl. That reminds me, I gotta save those Snapchat videos so I can maybe include that um it is fuck i didn't write that down what's the date it is september 16th 2020 and this is season two episode four woo yeah you know pedophile shit always makes me think of to catch a predator dude it was yeah no that makes sense dude that show just like recently like in the last month i went on such a deep like youtube rabbit hole for so long just watching clip after clip yeah. after clip I, i've sometimes just like caught myself i'll start off just watching like a pretty generic youtube video and then i'll just randomly be like oh this is interesting and then i just get into a rabbit hole oh that yeah shit until like two in the morning watch mojo's the worst about that oh, for me it is so bad because it just it gets more and more interesting the more videos you get into. Ha- have you seen that video of tom holland zendaya and I think his name is Jacob something, the dude who plays Ned. Do you mm-hmm. know? Um, it's like the three of them getting interviewed by the Watch Mojo lady. Yeah, you know and they I'm all ask about? her about it. Yeah, they're, and they're like, can you do the intro? She does it, and they're like, whoa! <laughs> dude, that was so it. cool. I bet that chick felt so awesome right now. Yeah. Well, she, I would have had the same reaction, though, yeah. if I was them. She's been, like, a solid yeah. part of my childhood. I'm Rebecca. For, seriously, <laughs> like, dude. You know how I got into them? I remember so distinctly. I don't remember what video specifically, but they did a bunch of, like, superhero origins of, or, like, supervillain origins oh, yeah, of, yeah. and I watched so many of those, and that led me to, like, their top their ten, ten lists. Ten. Oh, ten my God. Best horror movies of all time. Like, they have so many awesome lists that I'll just end up catching myself watching them all night long. You know, whatever... I don't know why, but something compelled me today to... Oh, I actually know. I saw an Instagram post celebrating... Um, Jackie Earl Haley, who's like Rorschach. Yeah. Um, and it, it was basically saying what an underrated actor he was, and that just sort of inspired me to look up some of his Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger shit. Yeah. Not bad, dude. No. He really was not bad, and uh, I'm honestly a fan of the makeup. Like I think it works. Like the holes in his cheek and it, shit. It's got a more realistic so well. like feel to it, and you can look at it. They should have it, chopped his nose off yeah. if if that wouldn't have been like such a bitch to do practically um, yeah make him have that Voldemort feel <laughs> seriously all bad guys I mean I think he just gets very undermined considering the fact that the, the original was, Freddy oh, was dude, so dude I know good, it's so hard to be Robert was England also so not good yeah all said and done it it wasn't great but you know what as weird as it sounds speaking of pedophile shit I, I guess um I, I thought the fact that they like upplayed the pedophile stuff and because like it brought a new level to in it. in the or, exactly scary. like in the original maybe it's maybe i i like just didn't get this because i was a fucking child when i started watching yeah. him but i think it's more implied that he he's like a child murderer yeah and just like kidnapped and i mean maybe it's inferred that he also did other bad they shit didn't to him go but into much depth yeah in it, it was movies. if anything it, it was like implied whereas in the newer one it was like directly stated yeah. that that he fucking it added like he didn't kill kids he I just touched I thought them. it was a solid 
it made it honestly made it. it more real. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because that's way. I feel like that's way more likely to happen. Yeah. Then also the fact he worked at the school that that was yeah. You know, that movie wasn't terrible. It was just like. The, it was almost like they couldn't decide if they wanted to do their own thing or heavily base it on the original. Yeah, they have a lot of scenes that <coughs> they literally just and, and not even just scenes, but like plot movie. points. And that's the thing is like part of me wants to see the homage in yeah. like some scenes, especially like the chick floating and getting slashed or whatever. But it, like just like repeated plot points, like. You know, in both that one and the original, when that chick dies in her yeah. sleep, the boyfriend is blamed and he's on the run. And yeah, they seem know. to have similar points, <coughs> but then overall try and change the direction, which seems to make it fall flat. As yeah. A whole. Yeah. It, seriously. Because like how I see it is, you either do it how Disney does it, and you either pretty much just do <laughs> like a photo sick, copy. Yeah, of just the a original. photo copy, or you kind you take the like original like idea and change it up into a new fashion. Yeah. Sort and of like it seems like book. they were just having a hard time bouncing back and forth. Yeah, you know, th- th- but none of it is Jackie Earl Haley's fault. He oh, f- no. He fucking nailed it. Dude, you know, he's just, like, more menacing, and that's what I wanted because, I mean, as a, obviously, you know me, like, a huge fan of those movies, yep. and I love them for what they are, but it was very much like the first one, he was scary, yeah. and then it, they sort of almost became parodies of themselves. What up, dude? Yeah, as they, like, because he began to be, instead of making these snarky remarks that came off more menacing, they just became too jokey and... Very it, it tongue-in-cheek. Just, it lost and that, the, like, that's scary not bad. effect. Like, it's entertaining, but it's not it's not entertaining the same way the first one was. The yeah, first no, one was didn't... fucking scary, dude. Yeah, the, the first one, I think the first and third one are by Gory, as, especially the, the in the ones. 80s. I mean, it's not to say that the 80s didn't have gory shit, but, like... No, but they, it wasn't They definitely pushed thing. the envelope. Yeah, they, um, a lot of directors and people did not dude. want to because they felt like not a lot of people would go and then... Wes Craven, though. Did You, you know, New, New Nightmare is a fucking really good addition to that franchise. Oh, it's very underrated. You know, there was, like, a, a deleted scene where... Because you know how Wes Craven was in it and he was, like, trying to pitch the chick who played Nancy yeah, in the script? Yeah, it's, it's very, um meta yeah oh super and, meta. and i also i kind of like that effect you know yeah sometimes that meta feel doesn't feel good and something they, they and, made it work though yeah there's an episode of twilight zone where it's extremely meta in the newer ones on cbs all access yeah i watched a couple of those it, i like it was interesting but i feel like you know like it's jordan peele that does that right i think he's a producer or something yeah yeah he he he's smart enough he was able to make it work to a way that I didn't really think they would be able to do, especially with something like Twilight Zone. And I feel like New Nightmare was able to do the same thing. Yeah, seriously. The, it was really innovative. And, and, like, every other franchise like that, Leprechaun, Friday the 13th, they all just took them to space. You know what I, I mean? mean? Leprechaun was just... They seemed to take the same character over and over again, not change anything about him, and then just take dumber people I every know. single movie. Like... And they, they make newer ones. And you know, the first one wasn't even, in terms of 80s horror I movies, it wasn't even I that bad. It, no. And that, that's the thing is like, all three of those franchises, I feel like, suffered the same fate. They just became jokes Delude. of themselves. Exactly, dude. You know what, what was like so awesome though? Yeah. When I binged as hard as I could, like, you know, basically what was available to me through Netflix or whatever else we had at the time, watching it on my 3DS, like, um, uh, when I binged the Friday the 13th franchise and they sort of got stale, because the last one was Jason Goes to Hell. Really weird. He's, like, possessing people and, like... That just, it... It was really... They they tried to do... It, the same thing happened with movies like Halloween, though. Oh, um, yeah. Totally. Halloween, and I don't think you probably even want to willingly go into those movies because they start getting into this weird, like, witchcraft and, you know... Like, yeah, that, that's it's, the it's, thing. He's is got like, this symbol. Like, with with Nightmare so on Elm Street, at least they... Uh, he was already they, they in this maintained a certain realm. yeah like a there was a consistency yeah you know what I mean and like at, even though the wise cracking shit got like more ridiculous it was still something that well, they were that all by was one rooted guy. in the original they were all by one 
Wes Craven did almost all of those movies. Did he? Yeah. He did almost what? all of those. I don't know if he did four. And that movie, like, Dream Child, I think that one is. Yeah, that that's really one of the bad. least memorable. But he did, like, almost every single one of those movies, which allows it to kind of keep this similar tone and feel yeah. to all of them. Yeah, true. Which allow, Dude, which I think three's fucking Awesome. Three is amazing. That scene That's where he's like puppeting the guy off the freaking oh uh, with roof. his tendons. Yeah, and they're just like they get wake up and just see this guy like dude. About to that, yeah, him. that was so good, so so fucked. And like the welcome to prime time, bitch. And what a dude. Oh, you know what's man, so crazy? Like at that time too, I watched an interview where, with Robert England where he said that. um they didn't have the technology to just pitch his voice down, so he would literally have to say every line fast when he recorded yeah. it, like dubbed it, so he'd be like, Welcome to prime time, bitch! And then they'd just slow it down to, Welcome to prime time, bitch! Um, that's what they have. That's what they usually the do TV. with Alvin and the Chipmunks. Dude, the, a- anything and in this. Oh, horrifying. totally. It's horrifying to listen to those guys sing. Slow. It, slow. It's horrible. Oh, I bet that's weird, dude. It is so weird to listen to. God, they really... They sort of had the vision, though. Like, like oh, yeah. to be able to do that at that time... It, it takes a lot of patience crazy. and stuff, but I feel like there's that over... Like, you can see what it could, the final product can be, and so it kind of gives you that motivation to continue. And, like, the, the old Chipmunks cartoons are fucking awesome. Oh, the, yeah. Their they Christmas album is the shit. Oh, man. The little... The Christmas animation was so good. Dude. You've seen that one. Have, right? have you seen the werewolf one? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Or, like, their neighbor's the, a werewolf oh, or Yeah, something? that's an awesome one. Oh we had God. that on the DVR yeah. for so long. Because it's amazing. Like, year-round. Yeah, had it, it was always TVR. that. And, um, the, Char- uh, what is his name? Charlie Brown. Halloween. Oh, yeah. Great Pumpkin yeah. or whatever that was. The Great Pumpkin. We Charlie always Brown. had that. On our, it, it was amazing. It, they're Dude, just like those classics. Mom put on uh, the Winnie the Pooh song, you know, like, fuck, I can't remember what it's called right now because I'm sauced, but it's like the up, down, spin. Yeah, I, I know what the fuck. About. Dude, and it just threw me back so hard because it went through the whole intro first and, uh, and like Connor and I just used to watch that so fucking much at yeah. the old apartments when I came over. Oh my god, dude. The old, like, VHS, like, Halloween ones that oh, we those, used to have. All of those were awesome. Do you remember the one in the Haunted Mansion? That dude, was a like, DVD. That was awesome. That one is so fucking lit. Dude, With, I, like, the pumpkin song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we found that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, Parker. Yeah. Pa- pa- that's because yes. Parker and I were talking yes. about that. It's so good. And those were, like, all, like... Going to Disneyland during Halloween and then popping that in our little DVD player. Oh, I know. The, in, in anticipation. Like, oh, dude, yeah, I when know. Yeah, we just pulled down the little TV in the van <laughs> and just sit there and watch. Like, dude, that was so hype because, like, not only were we in great moods <coughs> to go watch to go to Disneyland, but also like that always got us hype. Like, dude, that was always the tone setter. I I just you have no idea how pumped I was for that van because I went with dad to go like check out cars yeah at that dealership I, I Man, remember awesome some van. details very specifically one dad had a flip phone and I was playing a Prince of Persia game on it oh that's interesting um yeah uh two you know Wallace and Gromit yes love I, okay I was I was telling Derek about this I think on this podcast Derek has never heard of Wallace and Gromit how they even do some Wallace and Gromit stuff now I know and I you know what's funny is like I because I hadn't seen it in so long I was sort of confusing it with Sean the Sheep and then I realized Sean the Sheep is a spinoff and I was like dude how do you not know what I either are Sean the Sheep and <laughs> that uh, was awesome it's yeah so many like good <laughs> there's like the Wear Bunny movie Yes. And that that oh, was I remember that was in theaters because we went to Burger King and that was the toy I got like mm-hmm. and I remember that detail distinctly because that was the only drive through experience of my entire childhood where the person asked what toy I wanted like this big like claw thing or like this little action figure, um, but yeah I remember I, we got in yeah. the van and like that little step into the back was way cooler than the TV or any other feature to me, dude. I stepped up and I was like, Dad, there's stairs in this thing. Like, um, the guy was, was like, awesome. yeah, and you can also plug in, like, Wii's and... I mean, and I now you've like, got... I don't care, there's stairs. Now you've got those freaking TVs on the back of each headrest. Dude, I know. Now. And people I know. plug in PlayStations and stuff into that stuff now. Yeah. And that makes me well, feel... You, we, we could bro. do that 
in that van. I didn't know that. Yeah, dude, that's why it had all the all the little like audio and y- you know like oh, the red awesome. white the old red white and yellow. Yeah. Like cable imports. I never realized that. that I just but, never put that together. In my well, head. it got fucked up because something got stuck in there. Oh, that's and we were just never able to use it. Yeah. Damn, dude, that was still such an awesome van, though. Oh my god! Yeah, like, someone's someone's still rocking with that thing. Yeah, the uh, t- con- the Tamara. No, not Tamara. I don't know her name. Dance people. There you go. <laughs> Dance people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. Now we've got the newer version of that, but without the fun TV. Yeah, fucking seriously. God, it's so cool. It's like a spaceship. I drove that up to Bellingham with Brett. I do not like driving that thing. Oh, dude, it drives itself. All van, every minivan. I I feel like there's too big of a blind spot on that right side. I totally feel that. It makes me nervous because, like, I'm still like a newer driver. I've only been driving for like six months, Uh and so it's like, no, I'm always for sure. I'm always looking like very hard and always like. Ask him, I'm like, make sure I'm good over there. Like, I always I know, feel see, that, that's the thing. When I drove up with Brett, um, I think maybe I needed to get caught. There was definitely, like, we needed to bring big shit home and we needed to go up and clean yeah. before our lease was over. And I would not have done it alone. Like, having Brett in the passenger seat um, is the only thing. Yep. Yeah, it's like my spotter, basically. Uh, but that thing really does. Like, every van or minivan I've ever drove fucking drives itself dude and i yeah. feel so big because like every car i've been in has been pretty it, it's low. pretty small and so you can kind of do being in a big car and i mean that car's comfortable oh yeah it's, it's really fuck yeah it, it's is. nice to like sit in and drive but like i just i get really anxious driving in that car yeah i bet dude i'm just gonna make sure okay yeah I'm no just, just making sure because yeah. pretty fucked up right now um i also remember before every disneyland trip the days leading up we would make books, like draw. Oh yeah, dude! We would draw the uh, rides and stuff to the. And and the, the most difficult part was trying to break up that one screen into like three windows, <laughs> yeah. that and they were we just all see small all windows pictures. that we yeah. were just like all on one chair, just trying to do. I rem- you, Do you remember the one where we divided a picture, a page, into three pages or t- into three? sections and drew the haunted mansion like each of us was responsible yes, for a section and that was really interesting and also turned out really in- weird like that. <laughs> yeah well we were all pretty little <laughs> yeah and oh, like no, that we shit like that i've never been good at drawing at no um, and i mean parker now would probably oh my god he just us dude at I, that because <sighs> i mean he's just he's much better at stuff like that like i i can draw i'm not i'm not saying no i'm an awful drawer but like i can draw dude i should commission him to paint me just like the mansion oh, I can't believe I haven't thought awesome about job. that dude he would do an amazing job but for like my the... birthday he's giving me the uh, main character of Treasure Planet on his thing. oh dude yeah you were telling me that I'm putting I mean look right. at that fucking uh, oh, yeah, Neverland no, dude that's insane it's crazy like he's he's really good you know, yeah, I also painting's remember a different making the Disneyland me. castle out of those oh, blocks yeah. that we had. Oh, yeah, dude. And we were always just, like, sitting there looking like... Do you remember our block band? Yes. And oh we played gosh. that Treasure Planet song. We performed <laughs> yes. it to Mom and oh, Dad. Oh, my gosh. We also had that uh, Disney with the Wii. I think it was the Wii. With the dude. microphone. And it was Disney songs. I remember, I remember distinctly doing that Hannah Montana one. The climb. Yes, <laughs> I remember distinctly doing that song. I, I used that microphone to record my first ever rap because it it started. Der- it so Derek like... challenged me to a rap battle, and so I recorded it onto Final Cut Pro, which is like a yeah. movie editing. Yeah, I know what Final Cut Pro is. Final Cut's the shit. Derek just got. So usually Logic Pro is 200, which is what I use for uh, yeah. music, and there was some like student deal maybe, but it was Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, I can't remember the other three, but they were also super fucking dope um, for 200. It was, it was a massive steal. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, fucking seriously. Dude, I can't wait for the PS5. I and, know. Ugh, Man, like, it's just... That four hundred dollar price point is seeming like if I'm looking on things like Twitter and stuff, people that are saying, you know, I was in between, but this four hundred dollar price point for something that's still high performance as the five hundred dollar one, 
is making me want to go over to PlayStation <sighs> because not like listen the exclusives speak for themselves. We Dude, all know, know PlayStation is the king of exclusives. God of War, Spider Man, like. They and oh, they but, don't but stop. Halo, dude. That's Listen, like... Halo hasn't been good since Reach, though. That's the problem. They were good for their first. Yeah, like, I haven't played any of the new ones. Three games, and then they just kind of shit the bed. And this one, it it's hoping to be good, but early reviews are kind of looking like it's just like their old ones, that and it's just like their previous yeah. ones, more recently. And so that's rough. But then they also have games like Forza and. They oh, love Forza stuff. They love to taunt with Forza, but we have a game that's like Burnout. The exact same. It I it's it's not Burnout. It's something else. Do you? Remember, it's been around since you the remember original Burnout, PlayStation. Though, right? Oh yeah. God, Burnout. Do you remember Infamous? Infamous was awesome. Infamous was they, so. That's fun. made by the same people that make Spider Man now. Is it Insomniac? Insomniac. Yeah. Oh wow. And that's also man. Like, they were. I I didn't like put that together it. that first time that I played Spider Man. And then I went into it, and I was like, I looked back at some infamous, and I was like, these are actually, like, I can see similarities here. Oh, yeah. Like, you looking just, back, I yeah. can totally see. And you can also just, like, uh, see how, like, things that they improved. Like, Fucking no awesome wonder they were that. able to make Spider-Man so oh, good, dude. And uh, because uh, that was a PlayStation exclusive game, and so it's not like Sony and Insomniac hadn't worked together. It's just like that reunion where they were like, let's True, go fucking especially do this. for a city, oh, a yeah. city style game. Yeah, they were already like, they were prepped for that. Wow. They already worked with Sony before, and so it just kind of gave them that like... It was the perfect Lego. storm oh, yeah. to make Spider-Man. Oh game. yeah, and now we're looking at Spider-Man like, this is, it's crazy. That game is seriously yeah. so fucking Miles fun. Morales. Just I can't get enough. Looking at it, like, that game is so nice looking. Like, you can... Uh, the Same with the Arkham games. You can always jump in and just Ar- start kicking Ar- Arkham has ass. not missed on any games. No, but here's they the thing. Spider-Man missed. is more fun in the sense that, like, in Batman, it's basically fun to kick ass. There's all sorts of other shit that you do throughout the campaign, but, like... It, it's just that's kind of, like, a... Th- that's what you do. Selling yeah, like, is and, and, you know, ass. they've got those missions and shit, too. Like, a, a bunch of Riddler yeah. missions, stealth missions, but combat missions. But you're just... Missions. You're never doing, like... S- things that really make it feel like you're progressing you're, you're story, not like, unlike in Spider-Man. Like, but here's it's the thing. always just you're kicking ass. You're never like doing things that you think. Yeah, but there's all sorts of side missions. What yeah. I what I mean is like, in Batman, if you just beat all the side missions, beat the game, then you can jump back in and still have a bunch of fun. But all you're doing is finding Fight, bad guys yeah. and kicking ass. Whereas in Spider-Man, you don't have to just be kicking ass because swinging through the city it's, it's is so, fun. so insane. But also you could be finding things like pigeons because that's a game, that's a thing that they have. Yeah, dude, I, finding I pigeons. beat every single fucking side. That, like, I, I started that trying so to do hard. that again. I got all the backpacks and stuff. Like, I'm really just trying to get those suits because yeah. all those suits are really cool. I've got them all. Yeah, I know. I, I, still, I can't believe they still haven't put in the Andrew Garfield suit. That'll probably be in the next one. I mean, I don't know. It, the I, I think first Amazing Spider-Man was real. Had a really good suit. I feel like it didn't get better with the second one. I feel like it kind of the. It's just like the logo expanded as like right in the abdomen. It got thinner, and so it looked kind cool. of weird. Well, just you, like the you know, combination fell off. I, I I don't think they'll do Peter Parker Spider-Man suits though, as variants. I think they'll just have variants. I mean, I could be wrong. No, I'm but... talking about for their like. Oh, like spy- the next the main Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, because what I heard as a rumor, and this could obviously be wrong, is that they want to uh, build up, so they want to make a second Spider-Man, and then it's uh, Spider-Man and Miles Morales, and then Spider-Verse after that. So it, the plan would basically be Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Miles, Miles Morales, Morales Spider-Man, Spider-Man Two, two yep. Spider-Verse as Spider-verse, a game. Yeah, You're and Spider-Man, me. Spider-Man Two would also you would see Miles Morales, and of course it would be a solid like you would have missions as Miles Morales, but it would kind of the focal point was just that Spider-Man. makes so much sense because yep. that's what the original game oh, you yeah. had Miles Morales yeah. missions. You just you know what? I, all up. I want to play as a spider pig, to be honest. Yes. Hey, um, I'm. Not making dinner. I mean, you might want to eat a burrito soon because you're starving or whatever. But I'm making dinner for Parker now, and then me and Daddy are gonna eat later. But I know burritos aren't your favorite. Are you just gonna do chicken noodle soup or something? Or yeah, I'll, I'll just fend for myself. Okay. Fuck yeah, thanks, mom. Um, 
Oh yeah, dude. I and the graphics today, just oh, the man. gameplay. And oh, the, I still need to what finish What makes that video. me most happy? So, I mean, besides from you know the action and stuff, which got me hyped enough seeing all of his like electric abilities that made me want to just jump through a wall. But like him walking through with his friend and seeing the puddles and like the reflections and all this, just the little detail, and it makes me just be like, dude, where? Technology is going, dude. I like, know. We're advancing, I know. and I—I I mean, I've looked into this stuff. I'm a big tech nerd, and that's ray tracing. It's brand new to both consoles, mm-hmm. and like w- w- we've got sneak peeks of that before, but with games like Minecraft, and now we've got games like Spider Man with ray tracing, and you're looking at it, and you're just like, "Whoa, this is." It's it's crazy. I feel like I'm in this, and so it seems like we're gonna get to a point where if they can do that with things like VR. There's no limits. Like, there's no limits. That is a really good point. You know, I was telling some dudes at work the other day about The Void at oh, man, Disneyland. Just to anyone who doesn't know, I mean, I guess we'll just try to explain this. We did Star Wars and Avengers. There was also a Wreck-It Ralph experience. It's basically VR, but, I mean, usually VR is like put a headset on, stand still, but do your thing, you know what I mean? Kick, punch, shoot a gun, whatever. But this is all done in a stage, so you have this this headset and this vest that's what eight pounds probably. Five, eight, ten pounds. Yeah, like t- like range? I'd say ten pounds max. Yeah. Um and you're walking around in an actual staged area. So like any button we pressed, there was actually a button there or like um I mean, like, in the Star Wars one, do you remember you're on... We're on, like, Mustafar and, and there the was lava like, monster. Yeah, and there was, like, magma, and then it instantly got soft right as you yeah, stepped on, Yeah, when you on, like, stepped the, on the magma, the, the melt... It, it, they, sit, they the, like, like... rockish... They magma. made it look like, soft. uh... Fuck, what was it? Like, some, like, magma monster, like, shot lava at the door, and then you could... The fucking, you like, melted heat, metal was like, squishy. It was hot. Yeah. Dude, and, and really oh my cool. god, and just having the blasters, you could feel when you got hit. Yeah, um, and, and I do feel like, you know, working with a partner such as Disney does oh, kind yeah. of open up to some really cool opportunities, like things like Avengers and Spider-Man. You, know, mean, what, you and, know what it reminds me of? Yeah. It, you've done laser tag at the Family Fun Center, right? Yes, of course. It reminds me of laser tag meets VR. Oh, like yeah. it's basically like because you're running just through big, an like, arena stage. like that exactly. Yep. It's really um, cool. And there's there's nets too. Like I didn't realize that until we did the Avengers one. But do you remember the them telling us like, like oh yeah we'll be there to guard you or whatever. But that there's like drops yeah. off of these sides and that like fifteen feet below there's a net or whatever that'll catch you. Yeah. Um. That's what I could. I stepped on someone's toe at some point. Yeah, I know. Um, I did bump into someone every now and again. Just and I was just like, it was Oops. so insane. The Avengers one was, and it, not even just, you know, just like, like as an ex- stuff, you could like. Oh it, yeah, it felt like you could feel like sparks wind, and, yeah, wind and, 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 like sparks and rain. And shit. Like, and, yeah, it was really cool. And like, like like the Star Wars one was fucking insane. Yeah. I mean, when I walked out of that, I was like, that was it just the dropped. coolest not only video game experience I've ever had, but, like... Experience. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know what you would categorize that as. I mean, like, it's just such an unreal thing, especially, you know, we've been big Star Wars fans our entire life. Oh, yeah. And so, kind of being able to nerd out a little bit and just go into the Star Wars and it, experience it could have like been awesome. yeah. and, like, and it could have been anything. And it oh, still would have been fucking insane. I know, but like looking at Darth Vader come at us, dude. I know. Instantly gave me just like a nerd. Bone Shooting like, Darth Vader with like, a fucking blaster. He disabled our freaking guns. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, yes. it, it was insane. It was dude, seriously. It's that like, was the only time in my life I was like, kill me, do yeah. it, strike it, me down. Yeah, like, like do this already. Oh my god, that I totally even forgot about that part. And maybe, maybe for those reasons, that's why I liked the yes. Oh, thank you. Maybe for those reasons, that's why I liked the Avengers one more. Yeah. But I, I think that it honestly just served as a better experience. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, bias yeah. aside. Because I, I think at this point, I'm more a Marvel fan than a Star Wars fan, just because of the I way mean, that franchise because, went. Yeah, I mean, due to the sequel trilogy, it did kind of damper my feel on that, but... I it, still it, have yeah, um, I'm immense still, yeah. love for it, exactly. it. But Marvel has continued to grow and make me incredible. Like, every movie seems to just... I know. 
Like every movie, I know, just and and that's dude, anymore. like <laughs> multiverse of madness coming out. Oh, man. Fuck me, just, I'm now, so pumped I, for that. I heard something, and I don't know if it's entirely true regarding Black uh, Panther, well, but what's gonna happen is apparently they're just gonna the movie starts and he's he died. Like the movie starts and he's already dead, and because you can't, yeah, just out unless of you did a you digital version no, of you, him you for, just, you just for can't. death. Like it just doesn't even make sense. Um... And so the, it seems like they're just going to start off uh, probably going to do a similar tribute to, you know, what they did with Stanley. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it seems like they're just going to start off with him dead and she's going to go in and be the Black Panther. Shuri? Yeah. That's Which sad I, as fuck. Yeah. But, I mean... That I, is I so think sad. In the long run, I think she's probably going to be Black Panther. Oh, I yeah. I think they just kind of had to push it to the floor. I sort of thought that's where it was going to go anyways. I, I, I assumed he'd get, like, a trilogy or so, and, and, and then and then, then, then Shuri would take over. Her. Yeah. God, so that's sad. Sense. But, but you know what? On good news of Marvel, Chris Hemsworth came out and was like, Thor Love and Thunder is not my last one. I boss. saw that, bitches. Oh, oh yeah. He's like, he's only 1,500 year old. Oh, we got a lot oh of my God. Left with him. I, I was like... You are damn right. That made me feel so... Because I I was totally convinced they they were going to kill him. him. And because the thing... And they still might. They still might. In more, like, recent years, we've seen him be this, like, awesome, hilarious, like, ass-kicking dude and that and like them dun, just dun, like dun, dude off, like, his his suck. fucking ragnarok scene oh when he comes in with the lightning and oh my god the music too i wonder I how much just they love for the that. beginning of that when he's in the chains and he's just like oh, hold I on know. one second as he's spinning around trying to look at him i was like it'll take is, me sick <laughs> yeah it's just like it's a whole new thor that we weren't used to seeing and it's a thor that we were a really good change up. yeah and i mean really talking with tt hit it out of the park and I'm really glad to I see know. him come for Thor Love and Thunder and I think that he'll do a really good job. Yeah, he also said, I think in that same interview, like I had way more fun reading the Love and Thunder script than I did the Ragnarok script. I, and I mean, that that's a, you, a lot of directors can just say that but like from Taki Watiti, he's kind of a, he's a very upbeat oh, and, person and, and he, really, he played like a Hitler and Joe Jack I know Rabbit. as a and, fuck you <laughs> yeah like people are just looking at him they're like dude he is the fucking shit and he said and this is what gave me faith is that he was he was like yeah Marvel basically gave me license to just double down on the weirdness I mean looking at him and James Gunn and those guys I are kind know. of like the future of what Marvel dude Suicide kind of Squad I look can't out. believe you're not pumped for Suicide Squad it's just I looked at how many people there were and I looked at some of the people that were in it and I was like you, I you know why care. you know why there's so many people because so they can just kill them left like and right dude one of them. I know they're the gonna the, leave the like best four, quote five. from the whole the best quote from all of DC fandom was whatever actor from that saying like everything's exploding hands arms genitals like that is awesome it's just i i'm looking at it and i'm just like the more like the first like five people i was like yeah let's fucking go and then more and more people came on and i was just like okay but he, i i have two things to say with that. <laughs> i have two things to say one is harley quinn's outfit not the best oh, harley quinn outfit on screen the badass the most it, it's, badass it's it's like a it's like the arkham it's very arkham influenced yeah. to me um, and i feel like you know dc based on their record of more recent things should start looking at arkham because and arkham that's what has, batman's doing yeah i mean they have consistently been good mm-hmm. Arkham games the, and we've the, seen oh my God, different yeah. uh, villains in Arkham games so we might as well look at these the character like, so, designs the character design I mean, have been home runs on everything Killer Croc in Arkham I know. has never failed to just I know, amaze me dude. like looking at those oh man it's just awesome it's incredible it is oh dude it is fucking balls to the wall That that's some of the best Batman content out there even if you just watched those games oh, as cutscenes yeah. yeah. that would be dude I think Arkham Asylum made into a movie would be the best Batman you remember movie the ever. Arkham City like trailer they released with like Deadshot or... oh no the Arkham Origins trailer Arkham, Arkham Origins dude yeah, I, I was in an enrichment I, looking at that it was just like it looked so realistic that I was like wait a minute no it was is... everything you wanted yeah. it to be dude it was like him fighting Deathstroke, their suits. Uh, I mean, the their Arkham suits. Origin suit is to date, I think, one of the best bat suits of all time. 
Yeah, I mean, their suits both looked really nice. Like that's how the, I feel about that. The Death mix Stroke of suit the too. rain in the like, the snow. Oh man! <laughs> and and oh. then just going at it, I was like, oh my god! I, and like, the whole thing, even leading up to that, where it's just the dudes in the warehouse, and he's like breaking out of the floorboards oh and gosh, shit. It's just you know th- that voice actor did a fucking really good job in that game. Yeah. Um. I, I, mean, I think listen. that's such an underrated game, dude. Oh, it's very underrated, but it's also... It, I feel like, as a game, it's underrated, but as an Arkham, as an Arkham game, it's kind of... Dude, I think the, the right story t- holds I, up. Well, I think Arkham Origins is the worst. Not the worst, but not my favorite. I don't think it's the best. I think Arkham Asylum is, like, one or two. I think Arkham City is... Dude. I think Arkham Asylum and Arkham City are, like interchangeable for number one and number two like the, I, I think Arkham way, City is definitively a better day a better game well but, yeah but you can also say that that's just because it's the most recent it's a better game because it's, sure technology is advanced enough to where it's like that but like if you look at Arkham Asylum the first one that they made like in terms of just story and setting absolutely the best game yeah. like without a fucking doubt like and here, here's and the I thing. I feel like that's how you can only determine out of these games because seriously, they've developed like they've developed over so many years that it's kind of to the point where like you can't really put graphics as a uh, a good de- sure. But I, I was thinking more them. of the map because like y- oh, there's yeah, you can just larger. fly around Arkham City yeah. and, and, and Arkham that, that does so give well. it an advantage. But I do think that the story and setting gives our asylum a he, here's how I know it's like some of the best Batman content ever is because if you just if you take the video game element out of it and you just tell someone the idea of Arkham, si- Arkham Asylum, a Batman fan, they'll be like, that sounds like the best comic or movie See, or game that's, ever. That's what makes it like better than things like movies is because movies take a lot of liberties to make it to do what they think would appeal to more than Wider just the audiences. average comic book. Reader. You know what? And but so, DC has has been straying away from that in recent years with I Joker. I know, which is good. The and, Batman's going that way. Yeah, and f- like now they're starting to do that, but before yeah. they weren't. And I feel like that's what made those games have a leg up on almost anything is because they were, like, they knew who their audience was and they knew that oh, if, yeah. if they really appealed to that audience, then more people would do it just because that audience was Well, so can, can we just agree it's like the best superhero video game franchise ever yeah i mean we'll we'll and i think spider-man has potential oh, to dethrone Spider-Man, it they need I more mean, installments obviously. starting with i mean given you know this first spider-man was kind of a home run to start dude that, the story that of that's insanely oh awesome too. i just and love the adult it's take also, like sad like if you take I that know. and put that in a movie, I'm in tears because like, I know. It's yeah. So Again, sad. that would be the best Spider-Man movie ever of all time, and um, not to like take away from movies. I mean, no, like, at, no. Sp- to Homecoming, Far Love From it. Home, I think are the best, and I think Home, uh, Far From Home is, I think. And I'm not a hater of the original one of, No, I don't hate the first two of the. No, ones. I, the I think ones. they're they're goofy at times. But I think they're I, still good. I just don't like in the third one seeing. Peter Parker danced through New Dude, York. Dude, I'm just that saying, though, the Doc hell. Ock scene in the second one where he's, like, being operated on, they're, like, trying to saw the tentacles off yep. of him. Str- and really that's good. because Sam Raimi's originally a horror director. I, yeah, but he did not want to do Venom. See, that's what made that movie I know. garbage. The third I one know. is because he... They shoehorned Venom. He, in. Yeah, because he didn't want to do a character that he wasn't familiar with. And from and I can't blame him. I love that. Like, that gives... That makes me have more... Like, he's not a bad director. He just only wants to mess with stuff that he knows well you know what's to amazing too in um in the second one when J. Jonah Jameson's trying to come up with a name for Doc Ock someone says what about Doctor Strange and he's like love it but it's already taken yeah. and now Sam Raimi's doing Multiverse of Madness and it's like well that went full circle woo like, bitches and, oh and given that Marvel is giving a little bit of a not like a horror but he can kind of get into a scarier element does make me a little bit happy because I know that he can he, he can pull it off and still make it work for the audience Marvel yep, is looking for and he's yep, done it before he has and that and I love that and so I feel like that'll be good but I mean <gasps> oh. Spider-Man 2 I think both second movies from the original trilogy and the newer one are the best but I do think that I, mean, I think Spider-Man 2 from the Raimi trilogy is better than Spider-Man yeah, 2 yeah yeah 
am, am I off on like Wait, I think what'd you say? You I think, think Spider Man two is better than Far Homecoming? From Home? No no no. I think Far From Home is the best, which is the second installment sure. to the newer trilogy. Yeah. And I think Spider Man two is the best from a Raimi trilogy. I think both of the yeah. second movies are better than Yeah, I their... man, it's just like the Green Goblin is so fucking awesome. Oh great character. But Willem Dafoe is just Nailed if it. if he doesn't Nailed play it. Joker to Robert Pattinson's Batman. That's who, but he, it's a wasted opportunity. Re, real talk, it is. Real talk, Willem Dafoe is obviously my, my biggest choice, but Joker's coming to that franchise. You know what I mean? And like, So who, One way who or else do you think coming. would be... Because like, if, if I didn't want... See, I feel like you either go for an older... Or one, someone or you, matching his age. Yeah, you, you like go for Bill someone that's matching... Yeah. But here's the thing, I don't want to typecast him as like the clown, because he's also playing the clown on the Hawkeye show. So you know what I mean, and I don't want him because he's a great actor, and I don't yes. want him to be oh, the guy amazing. who's only playing clown characters. But I do think he'd turn in a, a great Joker performance. Yeah, I think what uh, I I mean he would be awesome. What and about I feel Johnny like Depp? Johnny Depp is someone that I could very much see, and especially now, like people weren't really wanting to cast him. Even Disney was trying to toss him to the side, but because of this Amber Heard thing. But now yeah, seeing but the way that's going, that's going, and it's on it. His favor, it's it's making. Yeah, seriously. I think some companies are kind of looking like. But he he is a, a he's little an bit amazing older. Because like I mean, they're they're trying to sell at, this as like that's a twenty year old. To like Paul Rudd though, Paul Rudd's like Dude, fifty, I but know. looks like he's like twenty nine. Like, yeah, not to the same degree, but but yeah. You're I mean, totally Johnny right. Depp does not look like he's a super old dude. You're he, right, and you put enough makeup on him, anyone looks twenty. So, well, I mean, you know what though you. You've you know the guy who got kidnapped at the beginning of Get Out? Yes. He has been campaigning to play Joker. Wouldn't be that. And I honestly think he would also turn in a really good Joker performance. Ooh, and I that's just, that's I've the thing. I, I think this, people naturally don't go for the for the black hair, actor. You know what an E boy is? Yes. Yeah. That hair I've always thought would be like a solid Joker. You I've know what this hair I, that I kinda really like, like? Middle part that kind of just goes down on the outsides. Oh. I've always liked as a Joker oh, hair. Dude, have you seen Lawless? Yeah. Okay, you know Guy Pierce in that movie? Yes. How he's got no eyebrows and the weird side part? Mm-hmm. Paint his fucking face white and put red Boom. lipstick on him? That's, That's Joker. Yep. You, know, you know what I mean? Like, the no eyebrows thing, too, is similar to Jared Leto's. And here's the thing. I think Jared Leto, one. I think if you take the tattoos off Away. of him... And here, his his God. sense of style was also garbage. Oh, and I see. I don't. I don't blame anything on Jared the, Leto on that. The, no. That was entirely just poor and, and, job and by all the, the tattoos and bad. costume designers. Here, like, here's the thing: like they could have. If I had it my way, Jared Leto would have still retained like the card tattoos. The, there's some tattoos that I like. Like, like, like there was yeah, like the the skull with like the jester hat, but Joker on his stomach damaged on his forehead and and it just seemed a, a little bit past what we needed like it just the hand much. one though i oh, thought the smile over his, that he'd put over his mouth i thought, I thought that, that was, was an insanely awesome idea oh yeah no that was really like great. whoever came up with that deserved a raise yes and i feel like they got they had they probably started with those like three really good ones and were like Ooh, these are good. Let's, Let's keep going. Like, Dude, I can't believe they tattooed Joker on his stomach. That is so, so fucking stupid. I can't so even. Dumb. But I also, he had like a, a cool like cane thing. Yes, really very liked. much. Yeah. Um, I think if his hair was... I do like luxurious, luxurious Joker. I felt like that was... And I didn't think the ass. chains I were bad or anything, nope. but wearing like joggers and shit. Didn't and care also, for the joggers, I, but I liked fit that, Jared Leto. Yeah, sure. But I, I liked that he was fucking cut, too. Because yeah. this is someone who is... Supposed to have been able to take a fucking beating from Batman. I just kind of like Ben this, Affleck's this, Batman. Yeah, I mean, no one can take a beating from Ben Affleck. Let's be real here. I mean, other than the fucking Dude, Rock, who he was put him so in badass like, in that movie. And I've talked about that a hundred. I mean, yeah, no, he's he's a great Batman. Did you hear? Big what? Warner Brothers or not Warner Brothers? HBO Max has officially talked to Ben or reached out to Ben Affleck about doing something for HBO Max, what it is is undisclosed, and basically the ball is in his court. Now, did you hear that Disney talked to Tom Holland about doing a Spider-Man show? That would... Oh my fuck, that'd be awesome. 
Yeah. I know. Oh my fuck, that'd be so... I've never even put that in my head, but like for Disney Plus, presumably. Oh my god. Like, that, how cool would that well, be? Well, you know what, that Especially is a perfect segue now, into. More swinging. The That's, Mandalorian. Okay, man, okay, yeah. Dude. That just looks badass. I, right as the X-Men came, came in, I was like... This is Star Wars, mother... And just, like... Like, This is... I know, dude. And I really... Just the the whole talk. Yeah. You see the photo... They're in Tatooine. There's a still photo, and it looks very Tatooine-like. You know, I I think they actually have had confirmed previously they took it to Tatooine. I mean, it looks like they're in front of a... Like, cantina look. Like, it looks like they're in Tatooine. And I looked at that, and he was on the speeder. And I was like... Oh, oh, shit. Dude, and you know what else? And pretty much... And I, I haven't, like, closely looked, but his costume really hasn't changed from the first season other than the insignia he got on his, his yeah. uh, shoulder plate. And that little change adds so much to the suit, I can't even fucking believe it. Yeah, and see, I also kind of like that not much change, because the thing is, I don't want much time to yeah. elapse between no, season and one and season they, two, because they actually... it's very action-packed already. Oh, yeah. And so I really would just... Don't want to miss wanna, out on no, anything. No, I just want to kick yeah. that shit right off. And also, I loved when he was talking about Jedi's, these sorcerers. Like, I was like... Well, that's repeated dialogue, I think, from season one. Because that was... The the chick talking was the Mandalore. Like, mm-hmm. when she was making that shit for his armor. Yeah. Um, oh, dude, and... and uh, I'm just, I, I want to see some Jedi's. And well, I'm excited to see oh. Ahsoka. She will be badass. And I think... Presumably I think get her own show. And uh, very well deserved. She's a very underrated character to be in everything. And, and Rosario Dawson too. What I'm Dawson also really too. excited to see is I did see um, a rumor that Disney has officially like got Hayden Christensen. Like they've. Uh, I've been hearing about that for months, dude. I and I heard that they were just like, when he's ready, we're going. And I was, what I, and I heard, I heard, that, I like, I heard oh, no. several things. I heard he would make. A short or a handful of short appearances in, just in the Darth Vader suit, I in love, the Kenobi show, I love that. and I also heard he would get a limited series, like a one season, like short, like five episodes. See, and that's honestly what I want. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want. want a, don't make me a whole know Darth Vader, Vader show. We know exactly. It's a guy five we've seen episodes, before. six I episodes, see, maybe. Like Darth Vader after he got like. Post step three. Po- yes, because he's gonna be angry. He's gonna be kicking ass. He's gonna be chopping people's heads off, and that's what I want to see. I know, see, baby. Like although that was like in a back thought in Rogue One, like some I we know. got a glimpse of it. We got right as he freaking turned that lightsaber on in that like ship and started kicking ass. I was like, and you, you that's know what? We didn't see much, and, <laughs> like, and that's exactly the thing is. They have now, as the, a modern day Star Wars franchise, set a new standard for what on screen light, on screen Darth Vader action is going to be. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because like they they can't make more time, and so like they if they made in any capacity, like whether it be for a Vader show or on Kenobi, if they had a Vader action sequence that didn't like hold up to that one in Rogue One. Then, uh, then everyone would be like so so. Yeah, because people would just be looking at it like, "Oh, this is an old." This is lame guy. as fuck. Yeah, this is this is he's standing still doing what old Darth Vader. No, we want to see him running around, freaking. I don't even na- need to see him running. I really just want to see. It. Give like, me just a repeat I'm, of that Rogue One if thing. I'm being completely honest, my dream scene of Darth Vader fighting is just like him fighting someone, taking someone down, looking at someone that's about to shoot him. Force pulling them, choking them, and then stabbing them. Like, that's Dude, just a dream. Ha- have you seen the comic panel where he's surrounded by, like, thousands of rebels and someone says something to him about, like, you're surrounded, and he's like, all I'm surrounded by is fear and dead men. That That is what I want to fucking see. I mean, that's just, like, I just want to see that pure just anger. Like, <laughs> like that's Remorselessness. Just, just doesn't give a fuck about what he's doing I just want to see him <sighs> kick ass oh my god bitch yeah that that fucking if that happens if he shows up again in any capacity and it's so cool that Hayden Christensen would be interested in fucking like being behind the mask again oh man I would love that and because... he's tall 
He can oh, yeah. do it. Oh, no, he can. And he's... I mean, Hayden Christensen is... Uh, he plays a great Anakin. Didn't really get enough credit for that, because let's be honest... Because the script was the shit. The script was shitty, but he was also... I mean... Yeah, he was a great but Looking Anakin. at what a good Anakin is, is pretty much just episode three. I, I've, we didn't dude, see uh, much dude. good Anakin in episode and two, three but is episode three solid. seeing that, like... Him kind of being persuaded. It, it's a solid addition to the franchise. Although he did kill some children. Like, you take that very demented scene you know, out, I which saw, was still I saw, very uh, badass. Like, if you... Yeah, well, I, you, I I don't think they should take that out. Like, no, I think that I adds think so much to his villainousness. Keep, like, that similar, like, anger to where he's literally willing to just murder, like, ten children. Like, if you can keep that same level of just anger... And put that into a show, but him as Darth Vader and him as just more, angry, yeah, yeah, more badass. Like, oh my god, yeah, I would. Um, and also him exploring some of the dark side shit. Yeah, fucking we've only seriously, seen him going as, like, to like a Jedi and use go Jedi to Sith powers. temples yeah. and shit. Well, did you see that? Really cool. It definitely looks like they're going to Ilum or or Ilum or whatever yeah. Oh, in, yeah. in the Mandalorian 100%. trailer. Oh, it's dude, would make me happy. I know. I just. I'm so excited to see Ahsoka. Like, oh, yeah. Probably more than anything else. Well, dude, I honestly think we should call this. We've been going for 50 minutes. Can you believe that? Damn. Yeah, seriously. Having the phone just makes it so casual. Yeah. That's awesome. Peace, bitches.